fun. My name is Terry Gonzalez. I am here to show you a little bit about all of these things. The first thing I'll talk about is the Antique Grace bag. Um, this is a small bag, but it has so many different possibilities for it. it. You can make it where it has an adjustable shoulder bag, and you could either wear it this way or over your head if you want it. Um, it has a zipper on the back side that you can open up and put things in. It's got this little toggle thing on the front. And when you um, look inside, there's two pockets and a zipper on the front of it. Now this little bag looks small, but it holds a lot of stuff. I've tried it already. I really like it. This fabric I purchased at um, the Arvada store, I think it was, a year ago or so. And I just love the way this little bag turned out. Now, some of the things she did on this bag was have you cut your binding on the bias, and she gives very good instructions for that. She, um, so I used the stripe here and cut my binding where, since it's on the bias, it had a little slant to it. She has you use soft and stable in it, so it's nice and um, firm. You don't have to do a lot of quilting on the soft and stable. And when you're um, working on the inside of the bag, it, to finish off the seams, you just put your binding there. So there's no raw edges or anything. It was a very easy bag to make. The instructions are super, super clear. Um, this part of the bag for the handle, she has you use the fabric, cut it, and you sew it together this way. Then you have to turn it. Well, that's always a big pain. So I have this set of turners that somebody showed at So Fun years ago when I first started So Fun. And you just stuff your tube on the turner. You put this little pokey thing up through the bottom of it. And it has this little hook that's rounded that you can hook into the fabric on the top. And you twist it. And you just kind of give it a little start. I always pull it very gently until I get it out. And the whole tube is turned. So it's a wonderful tube turner. It's so much easier to use. It comes with several different sizes. Um, you can purchase these. And um, it has one, two, three, four different sizes of tube turners and then different lengths of the things that go down inside of it. So this is a great purchase to have. And um, this bag was just a really cute, fun thing to make. We also brought in the hardware for it and this that goes inside the tube after you've turned it. The next thing I want to talk about um, is the Little Witch Party Panel. It's all felt and it's made where you can do, there's four of everything. So there's a color scheme. You've got orange and purple and teal and gray, I think. So you can use the same color for everybody. I think um, the lady gives you instructions with your panel. She also gives you her online spot. So you get online and she shows a little video of how to do this. And so she helps a lot getting prepared. My sister decided to do this project with her granddaughter, Charlie, who's 11. She's my great niece. And I think Charlie really didn't want to do a lot of the sewing. So Charlie helped cut, my sister did the sewing, and then Charlie, for instance, she stuffed all of the pumpkins, put the little stick in it, and added all the little glitz and glitter to it. Throughout every part of this felt panel, there's little things that you can cut out, like this little leaf and stuff to decorate with. Um, they made these little hats, and I think my sister bought some buttons to add to that. She has this little candy pouch. Um, I think in the pattern it said 
to make it this size, but my sister had extra black, so she made it a little larger. Um, this is just one of the things in the background that you can use, and it's like a coaster. Then this is the mask. They have four different masks for you to wear, and I think Charlie helped cut some of those out. Um, I think this is a bookmark, and she has glow-in-the-dark paint on it. And this is a table. So I think in the instructions it said to just use this part of it for a um, little placemat. But Charlie wants to set this on her table for her family to use. So they made a larger placemat and decorated it as well. This also, this banner right here, also comes in the kit. This that says trick or treat was from the panel and it's not normally in the banner when the lady shows you how to do it she didn't put it there but my sister thought that was a cute little thing to add to it the next thing i want to talk about is this bag called the oberlin um, tote bag this is a wonderful bag I had a really good time making it. Um, the, we ordered the hardware in for it, which gives you the leather straps. I used the wax canvas, and I had ordered it from the Aurora store. And when I got it, it had all these fold marks on it because it was folded into something like this. Well, I didn't want to mess with ironing it to get rid of them. So I just cut my pattern out and took the piece of stuff and just wadded it and wadded it and got it to look like leather, I think. I loved doing that. Um, the inside of this bag was very easy to make. You put um, French seams in it, so you learn how to do your French seams. This pocket is freestanding, and you just bind it and sew it under the flap. So it went together very quick. It says it's for the confident beginner, and it really is a great bag. It will hold a laptop. It'll be good for groceries. Um, it'll just hold a mirage of different things. And this again is called the Oberlin. The next thing I'll talk about is this book. This is called Fun with Fat Quarters. I originally thought I'd just use it for a um, Thing to have in your sewing room as a good resource but I started looking through it and she just has so much to teach you so she explains what a fat quarter is she talks about different materials you're going to need in your sewing room it's a very good book for beginners she talks about tons and tons of different techniques well I have done most of these techniques but decided I was going to try some of them that she talked about so the first thing I made was this little apron. It took two fat quarters. And so one's for the apron and one fat quarter for the um, edge there. She tells you how to finish your seam on this project. She um, has you add a pocket to it, but I decided I would put just a cute little saying on it. And she just has you use store-bought binding. So this is a super easy project for someone who's just learning to sew or just to make because it was fun to make. The next thing I did was this cute little star centerpiece. It um, was very easy to sew together. She has the pattern for the diamond in there. Um, she has you sew the front, then the back, you put your fabric behind it and you iron on, fusible iron on, and then you stitch around the edge and turn it. So there's no binding to this at all. And we used, um, I used, mono, no, not monofilament, glitter fabric, I mean glitter thread, and it turned out so pretty. This one is a pillow she gave you instructions on. She gives you the, the instructions for the, um, how to put your fancy stitches on. And we, even though you sew all the time, how many times do you use your fancy stitches? Not very often. So this is a good time to use them just for the fun of it. This here is um, tucked 
and they're the opposite way. So the first thing you do is you make your center tuck and then you measure so far away and so another tuck. Then when you come back, you're gonna go the opposite way on each one of these. And this was just really fun to make. It reminded me of doing things um, when I used to do a more simpler and it turned out really cute. So all of that was in this book plus several other little patterns she has a bag, she has um, two bags, I guess, and she's got a placemat that holds your silverware. Fun with fat quarters. Um, the next one I'll talk about is this here, Bird Brain Designs. And of course you all know I love Bird Brain Designs. This made um, a very nice sized table runner and um, it was very easy to do. So it came with every design separately. So if you have a smaller embroidery machine, you can put all the designs together or it came with um, two of the designs on one side and three of the designs on the other to hoop in a larger hoop. Um, so this is what the table runner turned out like. It's so cute, I used a little glitter fabric on it. And then I decided I would just do one on a um, tea towel and it turned out really nice as well. Oh, and I also um, knocked down the nap with my Floriani software before I put it on the tea towel. So the next one I wanna talk about is the um, Knock Knock Door Hanger by Janet Bapich. I love her designs. They're always so fun to stitch out. So I did do a door hanger. I don't think very many people use door hangers nowadays, but they're really cute. So I will put this out at Halloween time on the outside of the doorknob there. Um, she, when she gave me the instructions said, don't worry about changing your thread on the back because nobody's going to see it. But I tried it here in the center and did not like the white bobbin thread. So I rewound and did it around the edge there so it wouldn't show. Then I took one of her designs and stitched it on this little towel. And I, um, all I did was hoop the towel, center the design where I wanted it. And then I just passed up the stitching marks for the door knocker itself. So that didn't take very long to do. And the ho-ho-ho that was on the other apron also came from this little um, pattern. She's got one for Valentine's, one for the summer, one for the springtime, two for Halloween, and one for Christmas. And that's knock-knock door decor. Okay, I think I'll talk about this is called Twisty Zips. So I've had in my stuff at home, little, this little twister for a very long time and never used it. I must have got it on sale or something and thought, oh, that's really cute, I'll get one of those. So what I did was I cut out a little sample here to show you what you do. So you're gonna sew all of your three and a half inch squares together and then you're gonna lay this here where it matches up in the center of the lines on here and cut it out. And then after you do that, you're sewing it together this way. So the um, main thing to remember when you're doing this is to have highly contrast uh, fabric so it shows up nicely. You can see here, I have the nice little shiny stuff, but you don't seem to see it as well for some reason. So make sure you have high contrast. Um, these bags went together fairly easy, no problem with them. Um, this one has a pocket inside and there's no raw edges. So it was a fun little bag to put together. Now this one, the Bitty Twister, you make little tiny ones. It's really little. And that's how you, you do it the same way for this bag. Um, and it has a teeny tiny pocket in the side of it as well. So on these bags, I brought in these little zipper pulls and I wanted to show you what I do. 
When I go to the store to buy zippers, I always just buy the biggest one because I never know what I'm making with it. So I have a shoe box full of zippers. Well then, when I'm done, all of these you can see have been cut off. They're left over from another project. So I opened them up and put the zipper pull on there with your little zipper pull uh, thing you have at home to help you get them on. All of them are on there and not every one of these match, but I like the way that looks. So um, this little bag has all different colors in it. You should be able to, if you can't match the zipper, you can usually match the fabric that you're making the project out of. And that is called the twisty zips. The next project is called, I must have been very excited about my little twisty zip thing. It is called Twisted Fall, and it's also made with the little twisted um, rulers. So this one my friend Sally made, and the way they had you do this was you cut this out, so they have a, a page in the pattern that shows you how to put all your squares together. You cut it out, and then you sew it together and then you trace a pattern off onto it that's the pumpkin so when you trace that pumpkin and um, you put a piece of iron-on stabilizer onto the back side with the sticky side in so you can slit it when you're done and turn it and the sticky sides out and you just iron it onto your background and when you do that sometimes it looks like it's um popped up a little bit, you've got extra pizzazz to it, you know. So this one has four of them. And of course, Sally never wastes a piece of fabric. So she used all the orange pieces she had left and put together this little tiny one that she did just from all the scraps that were left over. And this is called Twisted Fall Table Runner by Meg's Choice. So I did do quite a few things with the little twisty tool, but it was really fun to make. All right, this was probably the first project I did for So Fun. It's called the Braided Twist. And what um, got me to want to try it was no quilting, no binding, no handwork. So it's like, oh my goodness, how are you actually gonna do this? So I have a piece here um, I did have a piece here. Here it is, of how it goes together. So you use this little tool. It tells you exactly where to lay this on your fabric to match everything up for each cut you make. Um, you use iron-on stabilizer. So you sew all of your little things together and then you put your iron-on stabilizer, which is cut smaller, so it's not into your seams. So you don't even have to um, trim your seams. So this is the first one I made. And this is what you do to get it to work. Because it starts out like that with that seam down the middle. You end up with this which is really cute. So this one is for Christmas and this side is for Thanksgiving. Um, when they had me put it together, they said to use iron on uh, steam a seam two on the seams because you're not top stitching this down. You're just using iron on. That was one of the things about it. When you're actually done and have it twisted, you can't even see that center seam. So I tried the iron on batting I mean the iron-on tape, and mine must have been old because it didn't stick very well. So I'm like, what am I gonna use? So I got online and looked, and it said E6000. E6000 for fabric? That's ridiculous. <laughs> but I had some, so I tried it. So I tried it on this piece. I washed this probably 20 times and dried it, and there is no way I can get it apart. The 6000 is a thicker glue, so it doesn't run. All you have to do is put it on the underside next to the edge and just fold it down like that and it's done. So this one here also comes in the book. 
and it doesn't do the twists so much, but it was very cute and fun to make. It's just a round table runner for your table. Um, this was a fun uh, book to do. They have so many different ways you can do it. They've got table uh, placemats, all these different things here in the back. You can dissect your circles into triangles and make it even more colorful. So the book was very easy to follow and it comes with the handy dandy tool. So this is called the braided twist and it's a great thing to make just for the fun of it. Okay, the next one I wanna talk about is more playful pre-cut quilts. Um, this book here, I used the Little Witch um, layer cake. So it's the same theme as the Little Witch felt party pack. So I love the layer cake, it was so cute. So I decided this would be a really cute one because it would um, put in the center some of the fun little fabrics and accentuate them. So I made this and I also had decided I was going to make a table runner in the back. Well, guess what? They made the table runner out of the same squares that I did the quilt out of. But this book has 15 different projects. All the squares are exactly the same size, so they're mix, mix and match. So you can use any of the squares in this book. So the next Making the twirly blocks, I wanted to do playful pinwheels. And I didn't do the whole quilt, I just made blocks to go with, to replace. So this block here is the exact same size as this block here. So that's what I did on my table runner, is I just replaced it with twirly blocks. The way she has your, your twirly, whirly blocks are really fun because when you're done you have to make two sets of each color because they go they twirl the opposite direction so this one's going this way and this one's going this way but you have to really look at it to tell that but it was a fun little thing to do and I just um, stitched in the ditch and put a little flower on the corners of the um, larger pinwheel areas and I think it turned out really cute. It was a fun one to do, and it was good to do something a little bit different so I know it really does intermix. More playful pre-cut quilts. Um, the next project I have, Mallory knows I like to go glamping, so I missed some um, vendor coming in and she ordered me glamping fabric. So she ordered in a, um, not a charm pack, she ordered in the fat quarter pack. So I had lots of fabric to use, but I wasn't sure I really wanted to make another quilt for my glamper. So I decided I liked the sunshine, the sun's on here. As you can see, um, this big large sun and I used all the glamping fabric that came with it. And then I decided instead of making it three wide, and we were glamping at the time, I put two rows together and decided, let's put it on the tablecloth and see if it works. Cause it's 90 and a half inches long. So I took it out and put it on the tablecloth and it's perfect. You know, when you go um, to the state campgrounds, the tables are nice nice and long where you could have probably 10 to 12 people sitting at them. So this is from the end to the end. It doesn't overhang the lengthwise, but it does overhang about four to six inches on each side. Then I decided I didn't want to make it a quilt because you have to wash and dry a tablecloth so often. So I just used flannel on the back there's no um, batting in it at all. I quilted it with, I think it's called Wanderlust by uh, OESD. So I have, for instance, there's a little 
uh, trailer here. Some of them have trailers. This one has mountains in it. And then I put mountains on all of these along here too, just to give it a little texture and dimension. So I can't wait to use it. It does fit the table just right. It's a great thing to have. So Mallory also ordered in the uh, Gone Glamping panel. And on that panel, it has, um, you cut them out, so you have a tea towel. And I decided I wanted, I wasn't sure about this fabric. So this one I washed. You don't have to iron it. So, which is perfect, because who's gonna iron a tea towel for your glamper? <laughs> so just know you can wash it and it'll be fine. It came with two hot pads and the instructions say to use the um, tape you buy at the store. So I did not like that. So I used this one here I put on and tried to, I cut the bias out of these and I tried to use, um, to get it to lay flat. It's okay, but I'm not happy with it. This one, I did the normal binding directions and it was much better. When I got to the pot holders, I thought, oh, I don't even have to put binding on the edge. If I just sew them together with the insole bright, it'll be perfect. So I found this little um, thing on the web that shows you how to make your little tab and you fold this little corner over. So when you stick it in your drawer, your tab's not going to be hanging out and catching anything. So these are the pot holders I made. And this was from the Gun Glamping panel. Can't wait to put them in my um, camper this week. Let's see, I do have a couple projects that are tried and true. This is the hot iron cleaner. I don't know why, but whenever I use something that I iron on, I get it all over everywhere. So my iron is always sticky. This you can just put on a rag, wipe the bottom of your iron off, then use a clean rag on it and you're ready to go again. So this is a great product to have. This one here is called Sewer's Aid. Um, you know, when you're using metallic thread and you have trouble with it coming off of the spool and knotting up and breaking, what I do is I run um, like four drops or four pieces down the sides of the metallic thread, put it on my embroidery machine. Of course, I slow it down because it's metallic, but I never have any breaks with it that way. This is also good for like if you're hand tacking your binding down, you um, want to sometimes have a knot in your thread. So if that particular spool of thread is knotting, put this down the side of it a couple times and it won't knot anymore. So this is called Sewer's Aid and I didn't believe it. So I bought some and tried it and I love this stuff. Here is some little glamping pins. They have little trailers on the top that Mallory ordered in. And I have this nice color wheel. So what's good about this color wheel is it shows you on this side, it'll show you your, um, of course, the color across is a complimentary. It shows you the ones where you can use these colors in a row or you can use these colors in a row. I mean, it gives you all the different layouts that you can use if you have trouble with um, color. So this is also available. So the um, next pattern I'm gonna talk about is the Raglan Waterfall Sleeves. It's um, a great little pattern. I enjoyed making it. It has different bust size pattern pieces. Be sure you pay attention to your bust size. So here's what I did. I bought the first one and cut it out on the regular part with no bust. I put it on, it looked horrible. <laughs> and the sleeves were skin tight. It does say it has a tight fitting sleeve. So the next one I did, I cut out the bust size for the front of it that I was supposed to. And I split the, seam, um, the sleeve down the grain line and added two inches to it. So it wasn't skin tight on me anymore. So I came out with this little top here. I really like the way it looks. 
And then I thought I should just have a black one that I can dress up any way I want to. So this is the black one and I made the sleeve longer. Before I'd say the sleeve was probably about, oh, that tight on me. <laughs> it was very tight. And so these fit great. I cannot wait to wear them. Um, they were a very easy pattern. There's like eight or nine steps in it and it's all done. You use stretch fabric and I actually used a um, serger to do my hems this time, which is new for me. Um, it doesn't take a lot of fabric and it's just a quick one to whip up. I think I have shown everything that I have today. I thank you for coming to Sew Fun and I hope to see you next soon. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you had as enjoyable a time as we did. If you liked the video, hit like, and then make sure that you subscribe to our channel. That way you'll get updates on all of the SoFun videos that we post. You can also go back and look at our archives. Megan has put together playlists of all the SoFun videos over the past few years. In addition to that, make sure that you have our discount card. It's a great time to get it right now as it's half off and it gets you 20% off all notions in our stores. Stop by today. Thank you.